All right. It is actually December 2nd. A uh, couple of things we want to cover. First off is when you go into your Dropbox, um, it should look something like this. And so you're going to have several folders in there. Uh, the audit, which deals with all of the utility audit, uh, some gifts that are sent out when you do a utility audit. Support will, will send you a, a, a PDF that will have a um, certificate in there for your customer, your lead, some sales information, solar information, your step-by-step -step instructions, which is the first thing you should be doing, and then just uh, a welcome packet uh, from True Power. So in the, the audit folder, uh, you've got a couple of things here. You've got a whole bunch of brochures that you can use to either send to the customer or educate yourself or whatever you want to do. Um, just about on every kind of audit topic that we deal with. And so uh, when you have a chance, you might want to go through and, and take a look at some of those. Um, I usually will... Uh, include, let me go back here. I will usually include this one right here that says util utility bill auditing when I send out my bill request email. And we'll cover that in just a moment. But from here, uh, you can, there are, the script is in two formats. One is a PDF, uh, which you can open up and it will look just like this. And so you can copy and paste from it, but it's not really going to do that well. So if you come up here to the Word doc and over here where it says open, if you look at, you've got different formats that you can use. If you just use Word for, for the web, uh, it is going to open up uh, the, the file like this, and then it becomes editable and copy and paste uh, mostly so that when you do copy and paste this into your email, it is going to maintain that, um, that link. Otherwise, if you try and copy it from the PDF, it is not going to want to maintain that link. Um, so as soon as my uh, email link decides to open up here, I was running a little bit behind, so I didn't have that opened already. There we go. So the first thing that I would do is to uh, come down to the email sample um, and create a template. So what you want to do is copy this subject line and go into your email and click on write and we're gonna put that in the subject line right there. And then um, we're going to go back over here and copy all of this. There we go, to your email. And uh, you'll see where it, it comes up with this attachment. I usually like to add that attachment. So if I add uh, the attachment right here and hit open, there it goes. So now it's in the attachments. And I usually am going to clean this up a little bit just with the spacing and make sure that everything looks good. All right. And come down a little bit and there we go. Maybe I'll leave that one up there. And there. So now everything is in here. So um, you simply just come up, go to new, uh, or excuse me, save as template. And so now you can get rid of that. And when you go into your templates, it's going to be right here. So you can literally just double click it and put the customer's name in there. But I usually will put the person's name, uh, not 
all uppercase or not all lowercase, but correctly. And then if you use this bracket, and then close it, that is actually the correct way to enter an email address. So when they get it, it'll have their, their they'll have their name. So um, then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is obviously swipe this out, put their name in here, and then when you get ready to send it, put their name in there and then you can hit send and that will head off to the customer that you you need it to go to. Anyway, so that goes out to the customer and you can see the template is still there and so you can reuse it over and over and over again. And that way you're not having to uh, retype and copy all of that um, over and over again. So you can set that template up one time. So you do have uh, the sample for the email template. And then at the top here, you've got a sample phone script. And so there's some important things to note here is we're not talking about solar. We're not talking about electricity contracts. Uh, the reason for the call is in regards to erroneous overcharges and billing discrepancies with, listed within your firm's utility invoices. Are you the person responsible for controlling the cost? You wanna make sure you're talking to the right person. Uh, we perform audits to provide you a refund on any billing discrepancies or errors dating back 36 to 48 months. In this time when so many companies are looking for ways to reduce operating cost and improve savings, this could not only uh, provide you with some added extra financial relief, but correct those errors to avoid additional cost in the future. When was the last time your, your firm had a full utility audit? Well, I would say that 99.999% of them uh, have never had a utility audit. Um, and if they did, I would ask them what was the results. And that'll usually tell you whether they really did or not because they might not be listening to you. The fact is 80% of the time we find refundable errors and overcharges listed within the invoices. Most people don't know that the responsibility of ensuring that the utility bill is correct is on the customer, not the utility. The utility companies are overcharging customers to the tune of $60 billion a year and rising, so they're not going to tell you. Needless to say, refunds could be substantial. Our organization reviews the utility invoices at no cost to you. We're compensated only if we find errors and refunds for you. So here's how we work. I send you an email with my company contact information and a link where you can attach a copy of your most current bill. After our auditors do a preliminary review, they will provide you with a client report and let you decide if you wanna take it further. I've never had anybody who had a large sum of money coming to them said, no, nope, you keep it. Uh, I will also provide you with a list of other cost centers that we audit and a link to our site for uh, references. What is the best email to use? Very simple. Now, you don't have to necessarily say this word for word. You can make it your own. This, this form is editable. And so you can kind of make it your own a little bit, but you want to keep with the same message and the same dialogue uh, when, you're, when you're talking to people. Ultimately, at the end of the day, every single business should have a utility audit. If they don't, they more than likely are have erroneous overcharges that they're paying on a monthly basis, and they probably have been paying since the inception of their contract uh, and don't know it. Most people look at their electric bill, have absolutely no clue how to read one, uh, and they look at it and say, well, it looks about the same as it did last month, and they just pay it. Or, yeah, it's a little higher this month, but it's always higher in August. So they just absolutely have no clue. And they say that they, they, they do all of that stuff, ask them how much are they paying for their tariff. They'll have a no clue. Um, and uh, so anyway, so 
the sample phone script is there to to help provide you an easy way to communicate with people send the email out i usually when i when you get the the email i jump right over put that information in there right away while i have them on the phone put it in there and say look i'm going to shoot this over to you uh, take a look at your email, open that up, make sure that you received it. Great, you got it, fantastic. Uh, all you need to really do is just simply hit reply and attach a copy of your most recent utility bill and I can get the auditors underway and see how much, if any, uh, refunds are due back to you for any erroneous overcharges and oversights in the bill. So. It's a very, very simple process. And if you can do that while you still have them on the phone, uh, your numbers are going to increase dramatically. So back over here into your Dropbox. If we come back over here and you look at your leads, uh, you can open the leads exactly the same way. So you can go over here and say, Excel for web. When you open that, um, from this point, it's a, a very simple process. But before we get going, I want you to see that in the call notes, it's actually a drop down. So you've got some predefined defaults so that you can kind of keep track of each call so you know what's going on, whether you left a message, no answer, sent an email request, audit pending, sent a proposal, new customer, you know, if somebody tells you to go kick rocks, uh, you don't want to call them back or if they're out of business. So you have that ability. Uh, but it's real simple. If you click on the phone number and, and using your pinky hold down control and using your index finger and hit C, control C, and then use alt tab that see then you should be over here at your grasshopper and then it's just control v paste the phone number in there and hit go so you can go back and forth real simple real fast something interesting to note is that I think I already have this open, so let me kill that so I don't do it twice. But when you, um, it saves on the fly. So if I click and put leave message and then close this and then go back and look at it. But you can see it saved the, the, uh, the last entry. So it saves on the fly. But it should look like this. If you go to your email, uh, I think it's 12 of 12. Um, there is a link to your Dropbox. There's also a link when your email, when they, when they send the leads to you, there's a, a link to your Dropbox. Once you get a copy of that customer's utility bill, then what do we do with it next? <laughs> We're going to upload it. So you're going to go to your uh, agent menu here and click on submit for audit. And that's going to open up this page. So you're going to put in, yeah, oops, excuse me. You're going to put in your information here, customer's information, the client contact information, the company information, pretty basic stuff there and then the audit information. Have they ever had an audit before? Most likely it's going to be no. And any business description, you know, because the name of the company doesn't tell you a lot sometimes when it's just PDQ Inc. Uh, what do they make? What do they do? Are they a manufacturer? Are they ice cream shop? Do, what, what is it that the, the business does? And then any special notes that you think that are relevant uh, that the auditors need to know. And then of course, a place for you to click and upload a copy of that bill and then select what bill it is. If the customer has sent you other cost centers such as their water waste removal, uh, workers comp policy premium, you can add all of those files up. Um, and it, you can add 
Uh, each file can be up to one meg, which is pretty large uh, for a PDF, and up to 20 megs in total. If for some reason you've got some bills that are crazy, um, then go over here to this link where you, and it's also on your um, PDF tools right here on your launch menu. But if you go over here, you can you can go over here where it says compress PDF, and it will actually shrink the size of the uh, the size of the file without losing a lot of resolution. So uh, once you submit that, then you'll get a notification from uh, the auditors uh, once they start working on on the case. So. It's a really, really simple process. But once this is done, then the door of opportunity opens up greatly, right? Because now you have a copy of the utility bill and you can jump into your back office. Go ahead and then select add new customer and start putting some putting the information in for that customer. So if they were in Chicago and they used uh, 750,000 KWH, then we might go ahead and hit submit and then we're going to put in the customer's information. So up here is going to be the legal entity name. I like to put, always put the business name in caps. It's the only time you'll hear me say that. Uh, and so job title, address, mobile, phone number, email address, and then enter their location. If they've got more than one location, then you can certainly add that. Click submit, and that's going to take you to a place where you can verify everything is correct. If the system recognizes that the actual address should be abbreviated a certain way, it'll actually give you that. And you can look at... Uh, last Saturday's training uh, where you actually see uh, putting a bill into the system and you can see how that works. But uh, anyway, so once you've done this, then it allows you to be able to put together a report so that you can send that to the customer. Once you send that to the customer, then I immediately follow up. So this is all within a few minutes of getting that initial electric bill. If I have I've, I've selected the customer or, or I've entered the customer's information and I've got some significant savings and I can create a report that I can email them uh, stating such, I'm just gonna send the email. I'm usually gonna save that file as the company name, uh, attach it to an email and just simply say, give me a call when you get this send the email and then immediately follow up with a phone call. So I've gotten their utility bill. I'm going to follow up with, uh, you know, Bob, I just want to let you know, I got your utility bill safe and sound. Um, the auditors are already underway. In fact, in the initial investigation also uncovered some additional savings in your electric account. I sent you some information when you have a chance, take a look at that and give me a call. When they open it up, uh, that should be compelling enough for them to give you a call. And then uh, then it's a matter of, you know, when do you want that savings to start and then take it from there. So I'm not gonna go through um, entering a contract today just because we did it last Saturday and you can review that on the, on the video. But I did want to go over uh, the utility audit and the the script it's and so we have added some extra benefits in here uh some extra verbiage that i think might make things a little bit easier and updated the email script and so all of these have been updated in your dropbox so if this looks a little bit different than what you may have printed out formerly go back in your dropbox you have an updated version because it'll maintain the link. 
And if you if you are um, curious as to what the link is, you can see it right there on the screen. It goes to truepower.net forward slash references. How is that different? Well, there are actually two different reference pages. So if you go to your launch pad here and click on resources, that will take you to a page that the public cannot, uh, there is not linkable to the public. They won't see it. And so you've got different sales resources available here. The Everything is pretty much the same, except that under references, the sales resources go away. And the letters of reference are moved up, brochures are down, case study and audit. So um, this is obviously linkable to the public, whereas the resources for you uh, are different. So and the public can't see that. So if you happen to want to uh, add that link by hand for any reason, make sure that you don't put this link in there. Use the references because references and resources look a lot alike. So make sure that you just don't have any sales information. I'm gonna wrap it up. I will save this recording. Uh, and have it sent out to you when it's loaded up to YouTube. Uh, these recordings are now being uh, saved in there. They are unlisted, so you can't go to the, uh, uh, the website. Maybe we'll put a link on the dashboard, so that'll make it easier. Um, but, because um, they're not really for the public. But anyway, so uh, look forward to talking to you next week if I don't talk to you again sooner.